Boom, and welcome to another episode of Nobody Watching. Here's a fun fact. America loves its guns. While I won't try to pretend I know all the ins and outs and the complexities of the ongoing debate regarding gun control, I can tell you how I see things, how I experience things as a lay person, the average Joe who has to walk the streets and be a witness to and be victim of the troubles and struggles that comes with living in such a gun-loving country in a time of relative peace, at least in country. Let's start with the basics. Because our federal laws prohibit a central registry of firearms owned by private citizens, it's really hard to know who has a gun and who doesn't. That means to understand how many guns are out there, we have to rely on folks to self-identify. That seems reliable. Based on recent surveys by Pew and Harvard and Northeastern, about 40% of Americans say they or someone in their household owns a gun. And about 22% of individuals, about 72 million people in all, report owning a gun. That's actually down from the 51% of gun-owning households we learned of in 1978. According to a Switzerland-based small arms survey from 2018, while the United States has a measly 4% of the world's population, we have about 40% of the civilian-owned guns globally. That makes us number one in firearms per capita. Each gun owner owns an average of five guns. That's up from the average four guns people owned 20 years ago. And the most significant growth in gun sales appears to be in handguns. But owning them is only part of the problem. You have to use them, right? I mean, smoke them if you got them. In the use department, recent studies show America only runs second to Brazil in the total number of gun deaths. While you compare the U.S. to other wealthy nations, we really outshine the rest with a gun death rate nine times as high as Canada's and 29 times as high as a country like Denmark. Slackers. So unless that's the kind of thing that seems to bring you a great sense of pride, gun violence in America is kind of a big problem. The bigger problem is America doesn't know what to do about it. No sooner than another atrocity occurs than the various sides circle their wagons, trout out the same old tired argument, hurl the same old tired insults, back their opinions with half facts and innuendo, and nothing changes. Nothing. As an example, consider the pandemic. Once we got the folks who run things to pull their heads out of their uh, to realize that we had suffered enough and that over half a million lives lost was too many, we got busy and are starting to get things done. You have to be able to put politics aside and work toward the common good. I have to believe that we're not as stupid as we seem. It's just that stupid is easy, and sometimes doing the right thing is hard work. I don't believe counting on our elected officials will result in any effective common sense resolutions in a short span of time, say in the rest of my life, but one can dream. My hope is that I will be proved wrong sooner rather than later and we can all watch this in the near future and have a good laugh. What I expect we'll see is a lot of fist shaking and desk pounding and more fist shaking and some posturing, some name calling, a whole ton of half truths and creative mythology spewed with the intent to bait those who scream until they are blue in the face about constitutional this and that and on and on until the news cycle shifts. Then the next shooting occurs, it will all happen again. The same script and repeats, second verse, same as the first. Thoughts and prayers, amen. What we don't hear on the regular is what gun ownership means. I note that many, many responsible individuals who own guns understand the responsibility that comes with that ownership and respect the power that a gun can imply. There are hunters, collectors, target shooters, and others. They're generally pretty quiet. They do their thing, they go about their business. The loudest folks appear to be those who have something to prove or are afraid. People say they carry guns for safety and self-defense, but studies found that people rarely get to that part of it. It's rarely an ideal circumstance that would allow you to calmly draw your gun to set up your shot with a still heart and a steady hand. More likely, you'll be consumed by fear, panic, and adrenaline. Less than 1% of 14,000 crimes from 2007 to 2011 involve people defending themselves by using a gun. Studies have also shown that a gun is more likely to be used for suicide or homicide than self-defense, and that people who keep guns in the home are three times more likely to be a homicide victim as people who do not. Those are just the numbers from the papers, straight up, no spin applied. Outside of being required to carry a gun as part of your profession, when you make the choice to carry a gun, you are saying a lot about who you are as a person, how you feel about the society you live in, the messages you send to friends and family, the lessons you teach your children, and so on. 
I can't believe that it doesn't change you or your mindset in some way. Think of how much you changed when you started carrying your first smartphone. But this is a weapon, often a lethal one, and you're saying you are now willing to play in that space. It's like carrying a loaded chip on your shoulder and you're daring someone to mess with you because you are primed and ready to take care of business. And should you pull that gun, you kind of automatically escalate the danger level of the situation that's going down. I would like to think that most people would work to de-escalate a bad situation over making it worse. Unless you're really aching to shoot somebody, why not? You have the gun, smoke them if you got them. I suppose there are places to carry guns. I guess if you feel you're heading into a dangerous situation, you might want one. But then I'd have to wonder why are you in or heading into a dangerous situation that requires you to carry a gun? Maybe rethink that part first. I try to go everywhere where there won't be gunplay. I realize that today's news may lead you to believe that those places are becoming fewer and farther between, but that illustrates another part of the big problem. Not everyone should have a gun, and something should be done to help determine that. Nobody said it would be easy. In Ohio, the legislature is putting forth a bill that will allow anyone over the age of 21 to carry a concealed weapon without a license. Think about that for a moment. Of course, every time you leave your house, someone somewhere could be carrying a gun, for whatever reason. My hope is that while we're waiting for our collective common sense to kick in, and our sense of outrage of random, senseless killings to boil over into solid action, we think less about weaponizing and think more about caring and repairing and moving forward together without packing so much heat. See you next time.